my summary suggests yesterday that we, we saw pressure uh, not across the board, but certainly the overall indices indicating that the market was under pressure with the, uh, the main index down 0.4% and touching a 15-month low. Is there any specific reason why we're seeing this market under pressure? Well, I, I think focus is shifting to the IPOs. We, we, we have the um, British-American IPO coming up. Their, their, their prospectus should be out by now. I, we have the Bank of Kigali IPO, and um, I think that uh, with also TransCentury coming on board with an introduction, uh, investors are now shifting their focus uh, into those. And of course, naturally, they won't be they will be feeling that um, they, they they need to take positions uh, on 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 the IPOs. So I feel that uh, this has had. Uh, some downward pressure. We've seen less demand on the market. We've seen less trading activity on the market. Um, we had seen foreign investors begin to uh, be a little more active sometime uh, last, in the last one week, but uh, we, we are still seeing them not being very active on the market as well. Mm -hmm. at the moment. Let's talk about some of those uh, stocks that were under pressure yesterday, particularly, for instance, for me, uh, Kenya Airways. Now, we know the story of Kenya Airways. They are replenishing their fleet. Uh, they did handle the, the, the higher fuel prices uh, issue the last time very well indeed by hedging. And one would expect that there is growth in this stock, but we're seeing it under pressure. Is this a short-term dip, do you think? I, I think it's, it's, it's a short-term thing, and uh, I, I, I think... Uh, one is uh, we are expecting Kenya Airways to come to the market to raise funds very soon. And we already know that the government has already set aside around 5 billion shillings for that purpose in this year's budget. So I believe that um, that is not going to be a difficult sell for us, uh, brokers and for fund uh, and for, for the transaction advisors. And uh, I believe that Kenya Airways is fundamentally strong. There is no fundamental reason for that downward shift. So I just think, uh, as I said earlier, I think it is just investors' um, attention has drifted away towards uh, what positions they might be taking on IPOs, and some stocks seem to be taking the hit. Yeah, we'll be coming back to talk about those IPOs and your valuations, and I want to know whether you'll be buying or not buying, or what you would like to buy it, as opposed to what they have suggested you should be buying it but let's talk about another stock where fundamentals appear to be quite strong uh, I came across a note here today from Kestrel Capital they were looking at uh, equity bank and we know equity has been one of the stars of the market in the past few weeks and they have got a buy recommendation on that stock they cite a number of issues and as to why this stock is strong and why they think they would be buying into it is there anything that you are finding in equity now that suggests that this is a stock for the future well, um, one thing about equity and uh, that is characteristic about our financial market is that uh, you find that the, the locally controlled uh, banks, top tier banks, have a tendency to operate or to uh, perform very well when the economy is very good. And that is why they have, because they have a more risky loan book. Um, whereas we have the foreign owned and foreign controlled like Barclays and Sarah Chattered, which have a tendency to, 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 to be in their element when we have um, more pressure on the economy, which is where we are right now. So I think we may, be, we may see a slowdown in terms of uh, revenue growth. We may see a slowdown in terms of, um, of, of earnings growth on, on those locally owned uh, top tier banks. But again, um, the fundamentals of equity are quite strong. Uh, I think that a lot of the investments may be coming to maturity. And so I think that their price should begin to sort of level off. I'm not going to actually say a particular price at the moment, mm -hmm. but I do believe that it is still a good buy, especially if in the long term. Is that your rating on the stock? Yes. It is a buy. Okay. Let's talk about uh, the issues that are coming to the market next week. We know we spoke earlier about uh, British American investment, and we also know, of course, there's TransCentury that's coming onto the market. At nine shillings per share for TransCentury, would you be buying? Uh, I think TransCentury is uh, oh, and, uh, shillings. nine shillings is British American. Right, I, I switched yes, them around. I would be buying British American at nine shillings. I think. Um, I, I've looked at the numbers, um, but not very deep. I've not dug very deep. But 
Nine shillings is the sort of figure that um, we, we usually expect IPOs, rights issues. We usually find the, the, the price to be between uh, nine shillings and around 12 shillings. Um, the insurance uh, sector is now the new sector that we are seeing banks um, concentrating on. And uh, I feel that that's the new frontier for growth in the financial sector. Mm -hmm. um, it is uh, quite difficult to value insurance companies, but I do believe that um, this uh, issue is is discounted and so I, I would be interested in getting in now seeing that uh, it is a growth area and that would give uh, investors a promise for future growth and transcentury uh, transcentury is a whole different story I, I actually received uh, somebody's valuation this morning and I was looking at it and the valuation was uh, much lower than uh, what the actual value the company is coming in at. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that uh, Transcentury has put a very high premium, being an introduction. They have put quite a bit of a premium on their share price, um, which um, I think they will need to justify for investors to get in. Of course, it is a very prestigious um, investment company, and I believe that uh, there are investors who would like to be part of it. Yeah. So I am... I think that uh, there will be interest, but um, it is all dependent on whether the, the price will be justified and uh, whether investors will feel that uh, it is worth getting into at the moment. Yeah, and I suppose some would argue that you're buying into the future given that these guys are in, in inf infrastructure and infrastructure is a big issue in East Africa. But lastly, let's talk about Safaricom. Um, correct me here, I am going to class Safaricom as the sick man of the NAC. Am I wrong? Um, I think, I, I wouldn't call it the sick man of the NSC. I would call it the, um, I, I, I would call it the d defining uh, man of the NSC. <laughs> and uh, this, this is because uh, the, the NSC 20 index is skewed towards Safaricom and so is the Nairobi All Share Index. No, for sure. It's very, it's a very, very big stock, basically. My point is um, that it I, is going nowhere very slowly. Yes, um, I think what happened is that uh, for a long time, foreign investors would get in at around three shillings and 90 cents and four shillings, push yeah. the price up to yeah. around five shillings and then get out. Yeah. Now, local investors seemed to, seem to have reached a point when they realized something's going on here and they sort of said, okay, now let the foreigners just deal with this. So I think that that has really hit on Safaricom's price and it has stagnated at between three shillings and 90 cents and around four shillings.